you shaped it in your mind. Total performance. Now the all-new Toyota Supra brings it alive. Super power created by a 3-liter 24-valve 200 horsepower engine. Super suspension, racing type, double wishbone, fully independent. Super cockpit, where you perform. The new Toyota Supra. Performance without compromise. Now the Supra dynasty begins. Who could ask for anything more? During this video, I'll share with you how to convert your tachometer on your Mark III Toyota Supra with a 7MGE from a high voltage input to a low voltage input that can be used with most aftermarket ECUs. You'll need a 10K ohm resistor, some soldering skills, and a volt ohm meter would also be handy. As you can see, it doesn't do uh, the 500 uh, RPM bias. I need to adjust the uh, RPM output on the um, on the EMU black um, to calibrate it, but uh, it is working. It doesn't jump to 500 RPM um, with the ignition on. And uh, when I started, you can see. Unscrew your trip meter reset. And retain it. Remove the dual vent by removing these two screws and then unfastening these fasteners, which are broken in this example. Okay, remove this outer bracket and it's actually clipped around here. And that's why you need to remove it, because it won't allow you to take this front um, cover off. So you'll have to remove these two screws and unhook it from here. To remove the cover, you want to remove these screws on the outer edge. And there's one over here. And then on the back side, You essentially have these screws here, and here. Also, you want to um, disconnect this uh, clock connector, which has already been connect disconnected. And, uh, you know, obviously that plugged in here. Remove Phillips head screw here. and Phillips head screw here and Phillips screw here and the bezel will come off. Also, I'm forgetting to mention, you also have to remove these wires here, which basically are your security signal wires for the security LED. And um, essentially they are uh, one is shorter than the other, but the black goes on the left and the blue goes on the right on mine. This is an 86 and a half. So you'll also have to remove these. And again, um, these are attached to the bezel. So when you remove the bezel, um, these, these will kind of stay with the bezel.
remove five outer screws and these two center screws. I would suggest removing these screws first in the outer perimeter as they uh, provide um, signal basically to the gauges. Um, the electricity basically goes through these screws. These are the mounting screws. So I would loosen the mounting screws last and have something down below to capture the um, gauge so that it doesn't fall and get damaged. All right, so I just have this rested on a cup right now that's about the same size, just to prevent the needle from getting damaged. Um, and as you can see, the resistor we want to remove is right here. It's just above this capacitor. It's kind of by itself. We're gonna rotate it a little bit, and I'm gonna to try to get this on video for you. Um, I'm not necessarily going to use the right tools, but I'm comfortable using these tools. I'm just gonna kind of get some uh, cutters. Got the solder joint here. I'm kind of straightening out the lead so that I can pull it out. So as you can see, I have one of these pulled out. I'm gonna reach in here and try to get this other one without having to disassemble it further. And Okay, we got it out. You have to excuse my bench, it's a mess. I need to clean it. So I'm, I've just got project after project and right now doing the Supra is uh, taking priority over everything else. Um, life just kind of gets away from us. So basically I've got a, uh, a 10K ohm precision resistor. Um, I just have to happen to have an abundance of them and I know it's safe to use. It's a flameless resistor. Um, it's overkill for what, what this purpose is. We'll be fine. And I'm just going to kind of bend the leads to roughly about where they're going to be. And then I'm going to cut them shorter because obviously I'm going to bottom out. So um, it should be plenty long. I can leave that one long just to get, just to get a little bit of an extra handle on things. So... Sometimes what a guy can do is it's going to be kind of like a cold solder. I'm going to go over this again with a new solder. Well, I guess that's not going to work. Well, in any case, yeah, okay, that worked. Basically, before the solder uh, completely uh, becomes non-molten, um, you can move the, the lead in and out and, and basically open up the hole. Right now I've got my bends a little bit off on the resistor, so I'm just kind of more, uh, uh, more uh, aligned, you know, better spacing the leads on the resistor. And what I'm doing now is just kind of poking the other lead into the more challenging to get to location. And this is kind of loose in here because there's basically a hole in this, uh, in this easier to get to pad. So I'm just getting the other pin lined up. I'm gonna heat it up and then hopefully it'll drop through. And again, I can add a little bit more solder to kind of clean it up afterwards. Okay, just pushed it through. So now, I'm just going to tack on a little bit of extra solder just to freshen up the joint with fresh solder. Mm 
Okay. So now all I have to do is clip that lead. And there we go. So we have soldered, um, let's see if I can get a poker of some kind in here. Well, I'll use this. So basically we soldered this lead back here, right there, and then soldered that one. And now we have our 10K installed right there, right above the capacitor. Right there and now I'm gonna hook all right the instrument cluster is upside down currently uh, and uh, basically you want to connect the if you want to test this which I, I'm just testing it you don't really have to uh, if you follow um, what I'm suggesting um, but basically here's the back of the tack mine was automatic an automatic um, non turbo I have the power in the normal uh, for the automatic ECU or for the automatic uh, uh, selection mode and uh, basically you have ignition negative then you have earth and then you have ignition positive which I believe is just uh, pretty much consistently run throughout this uh, instrument cluster. Anyways one of the issues with um, using too low of an impedance um, when of a resistor when you replace that 30k is that when you turn on or or energize the tachometer uh, the needle jumps so i'm just going to share with you when i power it on right now there's no power on the need on the uh on the uh tachometer when i turn on power right now i don't see any click i don't see the the, the meter move at all as a matter of fact um just to show you uh, when I turn on the power, you see 12 volts here. So it is feeding back to the, the battery uh, 12 volt uh, gauge. So anyways, using a 10K ohm resistor, this needle is not moving any at all um, when I turn on and apply power. So that uh, little uh, 500 um, RPM issue with you know not using a resistor at all and just shorting, um, goes away when you use a 10k ohm resistor.